DePaul dialogue was filled with unexpected surprises as student protesters interrupted the morning's keynote speaker. The visual and the interaction that happened in this space was more than I could ever do in terms of me personally standing in front of a room speaking. Um, I think that much of this work is about connecting, as I mentioned at the very beginning, head to the heart. I believe um, real for folks um, when it becomes less third person. morning keynote speaker, students headed to a breakout session of their choosing. The university offered 25 breakout sessions throughout the day. Breakout session, and it was just really inspiring, and especially to see like all the student protesters fighting for what they believe in, and doing it in such a public space, knowing that everyone is going to see them, it's really inspiring, and it, it should make people want to become allies if they're not allies. And since that time, I've been on hundreds of campuses in every state as well as campuses abroad. I'm on some campus somewhere five hours a day, five days a week. Because Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Boys, why are you masturbating? I think Jez is just, he's just stupid. I mean, like, he just wants attention. Give him attention, he gets more power. I feel like if we all left him alone, he'd just leave. Like, he's on necessary on campus. I think the protests over there are actually pretty good, though. Like, it's good that, like, they're angry enough that they're doing this. Like, there's a, like, they're hurting. We need to listen to them. I mean, like, they got opinion, too. We got, like, understand, like, this part of the community. We got to make sure everyone's heard. Like, I think everything around here is pretty healthy so far. Yeah, I believe today's been positive day. Like, we all really need to, like, get our ideas across. Like, everyone should be heard. I think that's, like, a good goal is just making sure everyone's heard. Everyone's appreciated. No one feels like, hey, I'm being like silenced to this or whatever. It's just pretty healthy that we're all together, we're all one big family. And I think that's all we need to ask for. Yeah. Well, I think today has gone well so far. We have a number of activities going on. We have the student protesters and we have, of course, the right wing extremists here. I think that the most important thing we need to focus on, though, is making sure that DePaul has an institutional commitment to inclusivity and diversity. And that's going to be the real work of how do we uh, implement policy policies that facilitate and, and, and really speak to our, that we are committed to diversity. It's the student protesters, I think they are demanding that the institution becomes more accountable. And so with that, I think it continues to put pressure on the university to be more responsive to diversity and inclusion. It also serves as a way to educate our university community to those who are not involved. What are they asking for? Uh, what do they hope to accomplish as a result of these uh, particular protests? 
one of the things I think that we should do moving forward, we need to make sure that when an incident of racial bias occur on campus, that we respond in a more effective manner. I think that we have to continue to educate communities through doing diversity trainings, through bringing these conversations together, but we also have to move beyond the conversation to actually implementing meaningful changes in terms of policies. Now, what do those policies look like? That is the hard work that I think all of us have to come together and determine what do these policies look like and how do we uh, sort of facilitate a culture on campus where racist behavior, sexist behavior, and all forms of bigotry are not acceptable by our students, faculty, or staff.